This is Michael with Beyond 20, and today we're going to talk about how to modify uh, an email expression uh, specifically for sending emails to individuals uh, in your lower dev environment. Uh, typically, out of the box, the email expressions will want to send to a distinct dev email recipient, but today we're going to show you how to modify that. Uh, first thing we need to do is we need to go into the admin client and we're going to create a new blueprint. Now, the places where you might have to change this is going to be in the user info object and the customer internal object. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with each one and we're going to add a logical to each of these objects here uh, and we're going to call the field dev email enabled. Type logical. I'm going to check. And then we're going to add it to our form. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go up here. Now, I like to put it somewhere where it's easily visible up here in the top, either in the bar or in some of this uh, white space here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to drag it over and put it onto our form. So let's see if we can get this to line up. Okay. All right. Uh, and then let's just line this up with this top box. If I can get it to select the correct element. There we go. All right. So we've got it added to our form. And let's go ahead and do the same to user info. So we're going to go to the lookup table object. We're going to go to user info. Now, the good thing about this is you as the admin have control on who will receive and who won't receive emails in this method. That way, if you have individuals that are doing testing, um, you can basically determine um, who will see the emails because that's usually one of the problems is you don't want people receiving unwanted emails from your lower environments. It's just not a a good thing because people often will get confused why they're receiving um, the emails um, because usually they won't be notified of what's going on. So I find this works a lot better uh, doing it this way. And so I'm just going to put it here on the user info in this section here um, instead of expanding it because in the user info um, you have the top part, which is the security, which we'll get to once we publish this blueprint, so you'll be able to see. But I'm just going to throw it here in the header bar um, because it's going to be easier to find and locate. All right, so we've got our field on the object, but now how do we actually send the emails? Well, what we have to do is we have to go to the expressions that control that and... The way that that's done is from the expressions, you have your system state email, which basically is the sender address. So you have your current system stored value equals production. So this is for the sender address. Now we're going to find the expressions and we're going to modify it for the recipient address. Um, Usually those can be found under the objects that you're trying to modify. So if we're talking incident, we're going to have to go to incident and look for the expressions there. And if you don't have one already, or if you're doing this for a new object, um, you can just create a new one. Um, so it doesn't matter. It just depends on your system, whether you have one set up or not. I prefer to look by details because it makes it easier to read here. So let's just see if we have one. 
Um, I don't see one, but I know where we can find one. We can also do it this way. We can go to the managers and one steps and we can look for the notification one steps. So that's the beauty of Sharewell is there's a lot of different ways to get where you're trying to go. So. So we have under blueprint, we should have our notification. Here we go, incident confirmation. So this is one that sends a email to the customer. So all we have to do is go into this email one step and we will go to the email itself and we will look in the recipient one to see what kind of expressions it's using. My guess is it's probably using custom expression and yes it is. So this is the type where I would probably create just a new expression here and get rid of this custom expression because if you look at the custom expression, it's it has this right here. So what we would do is we would just go ahead and create a new expression and then we'll replace it. So what we can do is just go right here. We're gonna right click. We're gonna go down here to our expressions and we're going to browse. And let's go ahead and throw it in our global folder because this might be something we want to reference. And if we put it in the global folder, it'll make it easy to see. All right, so we're just gonna go in here and go new. And this is gonna be a case expression. So we're gonna make sure to change that here to case. And we're gonna to go to name, customer, and because we're going to be able to reuse this, we just only have to make it once. Customer email expression. And we're going to make another one for user uh, info because we're going to use that in the other one steps. So <clears throat> the default condition is going to be the customer email um, because that's if it's in production, that's where you want it to send here. So. Let's go here to our stored value. And we're gonna be talking about the current system equals dev. And this is where usually you have your dev email recipient under stored value right here, current system dev email recipient. And we're gonna do a new one. And this time it's gonna be an advanced expression and because we're going to be relying on two separate fields here so current system equals dev and because this is based on the customer what we're going to do is we're going to look at the customer that's in our relationship because that's where this information is stored so we're going to go here to the customer and we're going to go here and we're going to go equals true. So whoever the customer is on our incident is going to look at that record and see if this is true. And if it's true, then we're going to go ahead and send it to the customer email address. Now the default here is going to be the customer email address as well. But we do want to add this in here um, uh, just in case. And let's go ahead and move this up because it does um, execute these in the case statement from the top down. So we want to make sure we put this above this statement here because if not, and it's dev, it's not even going to get to this statement here. So we're going to go ahead and say OK. We're going to save our expression. And then we're going to press OK. And now we're going to delete this custom expression. We want to get rid of that. Say OK. So that way we can make change to our one step. Now, if you have multiple one steps that you're making this change for, you're going to have to go into each individual one step and make those changes. So let's go here to our notify owned by via email. This is going to be the user record that owns the incident. So we're going to go in here. It likely also has a custom expression, so we're just going to go here to the expression manager <clears throat> and we're going to browse. Now the cool thing is since we already created this one, 
we can just copy it and we'll make a slight modification to name because basically everything is going to be the same minus the fields that we're pulling information from. So let's edit our expression here. And this time we're not going to be reliant on the customer field. We're going to be reliant on the user info. Now that's usually stored down here under user info because this is going to be linked to the relationship to the owner. We're going to go here, dev email enabled equal true. And this time we're going to reference the user info field. Collapse that, scroll down to user info and email. And that's fine, dev email recipient on that line. And then this one again will be user info. And we say OK. Click that. And then we get rid of the custom expression. Say OK. And close. Now then I want you to see once we publish this blueprint so you can see what it looks like. We're just going to go ahead and give this a blueprint name. And we're going to publish our blueprint. And now we just wait for Cheryl to publish the blueprint after it finishes scanning. And we'll be able to confirm that everything's working. Almost done with the scan here. There we go. And this is a demo system. Imagine this if it was an actual system, it would take a little bit longer there to finish scanning. we go so we can go here to our security and we can go to edit users because that's going to be where we see the user info information and you can see there's the box that we enabled for dev email right there for users and then likewise if we go into the management client and go here And if we go to now the customer record, once this gets loaded, you will see the field on the customer records. So from an admin standpoint, um, this is up to you to control within your company. Um, but this is something that you can do that maybe makes your testing process easier uh, in your lower environments. Thank you and have a wonderful day.